Hey guys and gals, it's Mike White. So today I want to talk about understanding pixelated images. So blurry images, pixelated images, images that don't look good when you get them printed. How do we understand those and how do we understand, you know, what makes a good image and what makes a bad image? Let's get started. So let's imagine we've received this artwork from a client. How can I understand what size it's good for printing? So I'm looking at this in the Windows Photo Viewer and it's at 100% as you can see up here. You know, here's 110. So that's the size on my screen that I can see this image. And so my first clue that it's probably not going to be great for printing at any kind of large size. So let's look at it in the um, File Explorer. So if you hover over it in File Explorer, it tells us it's a PNG file, which is good because it supports transparency. And its dimensions are 396 by 396. So an image like this is suitable to be printed at about 1.3 inches because you have a uh, 300 resolution uh, per inch. So 300 pixels per inch. This image is going to be good at 1.3 inches. It's going to look okay at say 2.5 inches. You can you can you can stretch it. You know, there's a point where the human eye can't detect, um, you know, the the pixelization. You know, where it looks okay. It's not going to be perfect. Um, you know, any larger than 1.3 inches, but anything larger, you know, it'll go up to two, maybe three inches, and still look okay. All right, so another way to tell what the size of the image is is to right click and in the new windows you have to hit show more options and then properties and then you can click on details. Another way to tell would be to pull this open into an application like Photoshop and then you can see the exact size. So at 143 we do a really good job of trying to educate the consumer and educate you on what size your image is good to be printed at. So let's try uploading this image, okay? I'm going to navigate to the image and select it and upload it. So this is what we call the simple uploader. And it's just uploaded the image and it's told us that the dimensions are width 1.3 inches, 396 pixels. So that's one way to check is to literally just upload it to the you know, transfers page and see what the dimensions. So now it's picked the best size that it can um, the smallest size we offer right now is a 4x4 and so it has picked that size because it's the lowest size from the selection box. So it's it's not going to be great, but it's it's the closest we can get um, that we have that we offer at this time. Okay, what I could do to make it better is I could pull it open in the layout designer and I could actually shrink it down. You can tell, I don't know if you can see on this video, but you can tell that it's actually, you know, pixelated. And so I can shrink that down in the layout designer and then I can click on it and see what size I'm shrinking it to. And I can actually just adjust that right here and I can get that down to 1.3, which is the correct size for this, or blow it up a little bit bigger. But it's showing me that I'm that's a 1.3 uh, pixel image. So actually in this four, I mean, it's very small. I mean, you can, you know, if you have an idea of what an inch is, uh, that's that's all this image is suitable to be printed at. So another way to um, determine the size of the image and to see what size it should be printed at is to just use the layout designer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer and then just click this plus symbol and choose image and upload it in the layout designer. And look, it popped it on the stage at the size that I needed it to be. So I see a little bit of white space around here that could probably get me gotten rid of. So, you know, we're wasting a little bit of space with that white space, um, but it's not terrible. And, you know, if I take this and I expand it, you know, there, there's a point where it's still going to look okay. Um, but there's definitely a point where if I keep expanding it uh, and try to make it fill the entire square here, uh, it, it, it doesn't look good. You know, I can I can see it and hopefully you all can see that too. Um, and, and describing and explaining why that is and how just expanding this image like in Photoshop or in the layout designer or 
anywhere with any application, it's not going to have the results that you like. Um, and I'm going to try to explain that a little bit better. But before we leave this page, let's look here. This is a four by four. And so the tick marks across the top here, you know, it's kind of hard to read, but it shows you there's a one, you know, there's, there's a two, there's a three. Um, it's showing you what size of this image. So if I choose, you know, XL and try to print this at 12 by 12, uh, you know, the layout designer is going to load it on at a very different size. Let's go ahead and delete this layer and let's choose the image again. And that's what size the computer is telling you you should print this at on a 12 by 12. You know, so obviously if you expand this now, um, it's going to look the same on your browser because this is the same dimensions, you know, on the screen but it is going to be multiplying that image from a 1.3 inch size to a 12 by 12 inch size and your results are going to be probably terrible. Uh, they may be acceptable to you, but they're not going to look good and you may have an upset client or just not be proud of your creation. So um, I think that's all we need to cover here. Now I'm going to try to explain why expanding pixels just doesn't work and, and that's a tough subject for for everybody so I've pulled open Inkscape to try to illustrate this problem and and have everybody better understand that simply just expanding an image is not going to create more depth uh, it's just going to blow up the pixels so this is we're in Inkscape and I pulled open this document properties window so you can see I've got a 3600 by 3600 document that I'm working with here and now I'm going to pull open uh, that image that we have and just pull that onto the stage here. And we'll just see what Inkscape does with it. So Inkscape's doing the same thing that the layout designer's doing. It's showing us by the size it put on the stage because our document properties were set up correctly for a 12 inch document. It's putting the, the on the stage at about one inch. So if we expand it, um, you know, to fill the stage, I'm holding control and shift and just pulling it out. Um, and just because I'm particular, we can align and distribute it so that it's nice and centered up. So there's the image um, and you can zoom into it uh, and, and see, you know, that it's pixelated. I mean, it's obvious that it's pixelated. Um, so, if, you know, let's look at our zoom here. If we zoom, let's see, what does one to one do? That's that is the actual size, I believe. That looks right to me. Um, so if you just change your view one to one, this is the size it's going to be printed at. And these lines uh, that are so pixelated are, are what are, you know, that's what's going to happen. Um, so, you know, to illustrate this, I'm going to try to take the opacity of this down. Let's see if we can do that. So that we have, we can still see the blurriness but now I can draw over it to, to, so you can understand, you know, the curve. So this was probably a vector image at some point. You know, it came to you from the client as, as a PNG or as a JPEG, you know, and you have, you don't have the vector drawing perhaps. Um, but I'm going to draw on this just so you can see how curves work. You know, if, if I take this and, and make a curve here, oh, you know, that's nice and smooth. Um, and I'm just going to hit enter to confirm. And then I'm going to go and change the fill and stroke. Let's just increase the stroke style to a 10. And so you can see that crisp curve. And, and so this, this is a vector object. And I'm not saying vector is the solution for everything. I'm just using this, this smooth vector shape to, to set up next to these, these pixelated um, lines to try to explain that, that there's actual pixels in the image. And, you know, when I zoom in, you know, the closer I get to this, the more I blow up the image, the more you can actually see, you know, the individual pixels. There are these squares here that we're starting to see form. And, you know, it, the image started with just pixels because we got it at a small size you know, there was only one pixel perhaps, you know, controlling this line. Actually, you know, for this part, let's go over to Photoshop. Okay, so here we pulled it open in Photoshop and I'm just doing the same thing. I'm gonna zoom in 
And Photoshop is great because it actually shows you the pixels here. So you can see each one of those little squares are pixels. So when I look at this line, there's just two pixels, not one, two pixels and a little bit of fade. So these, you know, these image, these edges, you know, these pixels out here that are like these gray squares and these like half blue, half black squares here on, on this side, those are actually, you know, just averaging for the size of the image. So, you know, it's, it's the, the pixels are fixed and those are the pixels that we have. So we don't have any, we're not going to get any more. I mean, we'll get more, but they'll just be blocky at that size. So I know I'm not being real, um, it's still confusing, but let's just blow this up to 3600. And Photoshop is going to do a really good job. I mean, well done Photoshop making the image larger. I mean, it's, it's actually just, it's taken what was there and it's really tried to average things but we're still going to get this blurriness we're not going to get those smooth colors um, that we were getting at the other size I mean you can see you know it, it's kind of put a glow around it because there was averaging going on before um, you know the teeth look a little misshapen here it's it's better it's better than nothing and this is similar to what our layout designer does when you expand it in the layout designer Photoshop's done a much better job. I mean, that's it's a dedicated graphics application, so it's done a much better job. But it's still not going to be good. So, uh, you know, it's not going to be high quality. It's not going to be crisp and clear. And to, to illustrate that, I actually, you know, put this together and drew this in Photoshop. And here's my original at 3,600 pixels. And just look. The, the Panther is, is, has got some, some edging going on, but you know, for the most part, especially the parts that I actually created in Photoshop, you know, you can get in here pretty close before you're going to see any pixelization. So I hope this helps. And, you know, I want to talk about the best ways to fix this. Um, the best way is to get a higher resolution image from your clients. Um, and, and try to, you, you can even use this video and send it to them so they can understand, you know, what makes a high resolution image. Um, but you can fix these things and, and you can literally retype this text, redraw these circles, uh, trace the panther. I mean, I have all those skills and I can show you, you know, over time how to do that. But you're looking at hours of work. I mean, I know it looks simple. But when you dive in here and you try to recreate a graphic like this, you are looking at possibly four to eight hours of your time. And you need to charge, you know, you need to charge them 50 bucks an hour. Um, you know, you gotta think about not just your time, but what if this grows and this is a business for you and you need to pay someone else to do that and you have overhead. So, you know, if you're charging, you know, just for your personal time, 50 bucks an hour might seem high, uh, it's definitely not when you get into a business and you have to pay an employee to do that work and you have to have insurance and all the overhead things. So um, I hope this helps and, you know, it helps everybody understand better uh, pixelated images. Thank you so much.